Start our stream in three, two, one. All right, it says connecting. I think we're live. Let me double check that. I'm trouble loading. There it is. There it is. Okay, wonderful. Hey everyone, welcome back to more Batman Athenaeum. Uh, this is going to be episode 9, The Bird in the Labyrinth. I am Dylan, or Kiwi, depending on where you know me from. Uh, and I am going to be just a temporary MC to help introduce everyone and get everything set up for the evening of script reading. This episode uh, was actually the one that was before the previous episode that was aired, but due to scheduling conflicts, we swapped it around a little bit. Nothing too unusual. So, uh, starting from top to bottom on our Discord list, anyone who is in the script, please be ready to go through and speak out, starting with... I. I believe the very top would be our lovely uh, Bruce. Hello, I am Bat Taco, otherwise known as Carl G. Brooks, and I'll be voicing <laughs> young Bruce Wayne. Hi, I'm Su Ling Chan, and I will be voicing Sandra. I think I got jumped over. <laughs> oh, shoot, I'm we sorry. <laughs> oh, God. It's fine. So, so, long, so long as it's said, you're good. <laughs> Uh, so Sorry, Cade. Uh, my name is my name is Cade. Uh, I previously voiced student one, but now he has a name, and that name I hope I'm saying this right. It's like it's like Chin Lu. I am so sorry if I'm butchering these. Uh, Hi, my name is James, and I am voicing Huarang. Hello, I'm Jazzy Oliver. For this read, I'll be reading for Takeo Yamashiro. And I think that leaves me. Hi, I'm Alan Chan, and I am Master Dark. Archer, you also have to... Oh, right. I also have to say, my name is John Archer, and I'll be voicing Deathstroke, the one-eyed boomer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess last but not least is... Uh, and I guess last but not least is me, the narrator, Sword of Destiny, Chris Johnson. I have names. Woo. All right. And with that, I think we can get started. And I, Lucia, will be voicing the writer. Yes. I'll so <laughs> be quiet and listen to you guys with my words. Oh boy, I'm excited. Batman Athenium, Episode 9, The Bird in the Labyrinth, by Lucia Lobosvia based on the works of Bill Finger and Bob Kane. Exterior, Japanese countryside. By a riverbed, 14th century Japan. Two swordsmiths present their blades to each other by a river. A legend tells of a test between Japan's two greatest swordsmiths, Masamune and Muramasa. Muramasa challenged Masamune to see who could make the finer blade. Both worked tirelessly. And when their labors were completed, they met by a riverbed. Muramasa unsheathed his sword and places it in the river. Muramasa was, went first, placing his sword in the river. The blade effortlessly cut everything that passed, be they fish, leaves, or even the very air that blew past. A bird flew by and was sliced in two. Muramasa's sword does as Takeo says. Confident in his work, Muramasa removed his blade from the water allowing Masamu Masamune to then do the same. Masamune places his sword in once Ma Muramasa has removed his. Masamune's sword cut only leaves. Fish swam, swam by it without injury, and the air hissed as it gently blew by the blade. A bird landed on the sword's pommel and then flew away happily. Finally, the sword cut a single stick under the water, which floated by, by in the current. Masamune removes his blade. Wiping it clean. Muramasa laughed at Masamune, declaring himself the victor, as Masamune's blade had hardly cut anything at all. But just then, a traveling monk came forward from downstream. A monk approaches, speaking to them. Said the monk. The first of the swords was by all account a, counts a fine sword. However, it is a bloodthirsty, evil blade, as it does not discriminate as to who or what it will cut. It may just as well be cutting down butterflies as severing heads. The second was by far the finer of the two, as it does not needlessly cut down which is it, that which is innocent and undeserving, only that which is dying or wicked. The monk reaches into his robes and pulls out a dead sea snake. 
perfectly cut down the middle. The monk then reached into his robes and produced a venomous snake, sliced perfectly down the middle. The stick Masamune's blade had cut had in fact been the snake, which was on its way down to bite the monk fishing on string. Exterior Temple of Cal, Courtyard, Day, Year 2002. Bruce, Sandra, and all the rest of their remaining classmates heel sit in the courtyard. There are only five of them left. The spring has transformed the previously inhospitable mountain into a lush garden all around them. Master Dark walks out of the temple's large, ornate double doors, standing on the steps before his students. When you first arrived, there were just ugh, there were just shy of fifty of you. Now, only five remain. You are, every one of you, remarkable warriors. But even amongst you, there are weaker links. Survive my final test and earn your new title, bestowed by me, your teacher. However, only one of you can rise above the rest to claim the title of champion. So, the question remains. Who will it be? Come now. Face your final challenge. Dark walks over to another section of the temple, opening a secret passage with the seal he wears around his neck as a key. He motions for the students to follow and heads inside. The students all stand and do as they are told. Interior Temple of Kao, Labyrinth of Wuchang. Dark leads the students to the mouth of, the, of a great indoor labyrinth. Suspended from the ceiling in the very center of the room is a sword without a sheath, Soul Breaker. This is the Labyrinth of Wuchang, also called the Labyrinth of Five Virtues. You graduate and leave. You graduate and leave this place alive. You must make it to the other side. However, in the center of the maze, you will find a great and terrible treasure. A sword by the name of Soulbreaker. The students murmur amongst themselves about it. Bruce looks at Sandra, who keeps her eyes forward, completely poker-faced. Tomorrow, Soulbreaker shall be lowered into the center of the labyrinth. Whomever should claim this sword make it, and make it to the other side of the maze with it in its hand shall be declared champion. The rest of you may graduate with honors, but will forever carry the burden of your mediocrity. But that is for tomorrow. For now, you will spend your day in peaceful contemplation. Grapple with your mortality as its, as its reality is inescapable. I can only be, it can only be postponed. Exterior, Temple of Cal, Gardens. Bruce and the other students mill about the gardens. A table of food is prepared for them including steamed meat buns, bowls of rice, stir-fried vegetables, and pastries filled with red bean paste. As the students all gather to eat, they begin to talk amongst themselves. Bruce goes to serve himself and finds Takeo Yamashiro putting his hand in front of Bruce, stopping him. Back of the line. You show, def you show def deference to your, to your betters. Deference to your betters. Blah, I can't talk. <laughs> You're right. You can't talk. <laughs> All right, seriously. You're right. Let me know if you find anyone that fits the bill. Bruce pushes past and goes to serve himself. Takeo makes a displeased sound and then grabs Bruce by his gi. Who do you think you are? Student one steps between them. Master Doc said we should spend the rest of today in peaceful contemplation. I'd hate for any of us to disobey our master. This like guy Jin isn't even isn't even worth it. Takeo storms off, pulling Huarang out of the line and taking him to the gazebo to talk. <laughs> and sneeze. He turns to Bruce. Bruce. Why is it that every time I turn around, I find you causing trouble, Guaylo? Do you have ulterior intentions being here? I would hate to think the worst of you. 
As if you haven't thought the worst of me from the moment you saw me. Sandra cuts between them, grabbing a bowl of rice from the table. Enough. I am hungry and in no mood to clean grains of spilled rice out of the grass again. Keep your petty squabbles to yourselves. Strong words for a single sister among brothers. I wonder what brings such an exceptional woman to the Temple of Cal. Perhaps you've come looking for a husband worthy of challenging you. Or perhaps it is you who has the ulterior motives. Ah, I see. You want us not to notice how suspicious it's been. How suspicious what's been? Your absence. King grimaces as Sandra grabs her food and finishes serving herself. There, that's enough food for me. Anything else, brother? Or am I free to go eat? Do as you will. Sandra goes. That's right. You haven't been around for a while, have you? When did you return? Keep your large nose out of others' business, Guilo. Jin Lu grabs his food and goes off. Bruce shrugs and gives his food as well. He sits by Hua Rang, who is calmly reading. Takeo, sitting across from Hua, frowns when, frowns when Bruce comes to sit with him. What? Not hungry? The food will be there after others have finished serving themselves. There's no reason to kick up a fuss. Patience will grant me the same meal without the need for argument. Well, yeah, but you'll probably... It'll probably be colder. A small price to pay for peace. You see? Some people around here know their opinion. You know, some people are... Don't mock me. Some people around here know their place, guy, Jin. Don't fucking mock the way I talk or I'll punch you in the throat. Bruce, Bruce ignores Takeo and eats, looking at the others. So where has our missing brother been all this time? How should I know? I just figured the sort of person who sits in quiet contemplation awaiting their turn is probably the same sort of person who sees what others miss by fighting amongst themselves. Hua Rong laughs softly. <laughs> well met, Western brother. Indeed. Our missing brother returned late last night, and he was not alone. A man came with him. Is that so? Any idea who the man was? Unfortunately, you now know as much as I do. Huh. Odd. I haven't seen anyone else around. Enough with your hushed conversations. Your brother will think you're plotting against him. Or that you're lovers. Bruce makes a look of disgust. What the hell is your problem? Be calm. He strikes you with words he thinks will offend you most. He cannot hurt you if you are not offended to begin with. Of course you'd offend him. You're, you're practically as much of an outsider as him. The Guilo, the Gao Li, and the woman. I look forward to seeing you all finally put in your place tomorrow. Takeo laughs. Jin comes over. <coughs> Jin comes over and puts a hand on Takeo's shoulder in mourning. Takeo hushes up and goes to sit with Jin at another table. Gao Li? It is a derogatory name for someone of Korean descent. Oh. I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, I assumed everyone here was Chinese but me. Then you must know what happens when we assume. I make, out. <laughs> I make an ass out of you and me. Well, of you, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sanders smirks the chuckle. Ass of you and... Oh, I see. It is a play on words. Clever. Huarong laughs softly as well. Sandra finishes her food and stands. Where are you going? Where else? To bed. Better to save my strength for tomorrow. Sandra leaves. Good luck, Easterner. <laughs> I do not need it. You're going to die, Westerner. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. 
Bruce left. Yes, he did. <laughs> if you do not intend to go straight to bed as well, perhaps you would care to join me for some evening meditation. Sure. Hey, Why not? Hey, hey, guys, I'm getting reports from my friend that the stream's cutting in and out. It was streaming in and out near the end of 10, and I think it's streaming in and out, cutting in and out now. Uh oh, that's odd. Um... Hmm, give me just a moment. Let me go through and investigate real fast. Hmm. What's going on? Checking everything now. It uh, We have reports that the stream is kind of cutting in and out a little bit. So... Trying to check that. Um, Let me check my solar panel. Things seem to be mostly fine on my end. It says everything's streaming fine. Um, hmm. Um, it definitely could be something that's just not coming up in my streaming system. Um, right. Could someone Did else someone check that? anything like dropped frames or anything? Um, not right now. Uh, could you go through and uh, check that just over on the Lucia Lobosia channel? Let me just put a link in the. Well, no, you should say that you're. In OBS. Yeah, I, on my end, it's occasionally freezing. Hmm. Checking mine. It okay, seems to yeah. be. If it's, a, if it's happening more on than one. End. Oh, hmm. I do get a circle here. Well, I guess we should just continue. Um. Uh. Yeah, I'm getting someone else also has buffer. I say yeah, that it might have just went out on my end. Yeah, Apple. Yeah, uh, Applegate just ref just um said in the chat that there's buffering issues as well. Hmm. Ooh, that right. could also be Twitch. Yeah. Ah, yeah. um, like yeah, yeah. uh, you know what it's it is. Critical Role like just went live. It yeah. was them. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. There's oh. a channel that's got like. You know, a million people watching no, it right it's now. Not that. It, it might be a Twitch channel. Mad Mercer! <laughs> we can't do anything about Twitch, so. Hopefully it stays up. If not, uh, I don't know. Maybe we can have someone else. I can go through and like send the PNG to someone else and they can go through and stream for a bit if that improves it any better. But let's go for a little bit and see what happens. Twitch. I think we should just continue. We can't do anything about the fact that Twitch is struggling with crit Critical Role. If anything, we can always like try to do these episodes again later if people mm -hmm. want to hear them again so you plus you're going to record the lines later anyway yeah, yeah. We are. Right. And, the ar cool. and, and, and the archives will be up on youtube yeah that's true well, yeah and that twitch should be, be uninterrupted you think twitch should be prepared to deal with critical role at this point no. i mean it's every thursday so let's just, guys yeah. let's just continue let's just all right continue. let's just go let's just go all right uh where were we at sorry well ryan bows to bows okay Quavrong bows. What? Sorry. Quavrong bows to Bruce respectively, or respectfully. Bruce returns the gesture. Quavrong then turns to Takeo and Chin. Chin. You're welcome to join us as well, brothers. Thank you, brother. We would be honored to accept your generous invitation. Takeo snorts, arms crossed. Fine. Splendid. Then I will fetch us some incense. Quavrong hurries off, leaving Takeo there frowning. Bruce bows to him as well. Takeo only rolls his eyes. The world is so much more complicated than I had been led to believe. Exterior, Temple of Cal, Gardens. Bruce, Takeo, and Chen all meditate. Kwa arrives with lit incense. Took you long enough. Forgive me. I couldn't find my incense. I must have run out without realizing and had to ask the monks to provide some. No harm done, Brother Hua. Come, join us. Hua sets up the incense and joins them meditating. From the... From an outside perspective, it drives us home. It drives home just how artificial the division is. Why do we separate ourselves into tribes? Is the fact that we all share this failing not a sign of how similar we truly are? Interior, Temple of Cal. Barracks, night. Bruce lays in his bunk, asleep, as do the other students. The sound of a distant bell ringing rouses him. Bruce sits up, 
rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. He notices some of his fellow students running out of the barracks. What's going on? That is the emergency bell. Something terrible must have happened. Bruce hops out of bed, running to Sandra's bed. Sandra. She isn't there. Bruce looks around, a bit panicked. He's suddenly smacked upside the head. Hurry up, Westerner. Don't dawdle. Bruce breathes in relief. Right behind you, Easterner. Bruce and Sandra run, hurry out along with the others. Exterior, Temple of Cow, courtyard. All the students have gathered out in the courtyard. Master Dark is there in his silk nighttime robes, cursing in Chinese at the monks. He's clearly furious. He turns to face his gathered students. Soulbreaker is gone. Which one of you was it? Are you a faithless thief? At the very least, show you're not also a coward. Well, which one? The students all keep their heads bowed. None speak up. This infuriates Dark further. Show yourself! Disgraceful deceiver! Or I'll have all you thrown into the pits of a thousand deaths! Still, no one speaks up. Dark gives a great shout and then punches a hole clean uh, and punches a hole clean through a stone pillar. Uh, he breathes, calming, and turns back to his students. Very well. Search the barracks. The monks hurry off. If Soulbreaker is found amongst any of your belongings. The perpetrator will answer to me. A monk rushes over, holding the sheath's blade. The monk gets to his knees and offers the blade to Dark. Dark snatches his eye, snatches it up, eyes alight with fury. Who? The monk looks up and points at Sandra. Me? The woman. Caesar! The monk surrounds Sandra and grab her. No, this cannot be. I did not steal anything. Someone must have placed the sword in my bed. Silence your forked tongue. Bind her and throw her in the dungeon. She is not to see the light of day until I decided what I wish to do with her. The monks drag Sandra off. Bruce looks after her in worry. He then throws himself to his knees before dark. Master, with all due respect, I believe her. Wusan isn't the sort of person to steal. Do you wish to join her for your... Do you wish to join her for your insolence? I have half a mind to name you as her accomplice! Hohran comes to kneel beside Bruce, lowering his head to the ground. F -f Forgive me, Master, for speaking out of turn. Brother Bruce here was meditating with me until bedtime. He could not have been responsible. Chen comes forward, kneeling beside Bruce and Hohran. If I may, Master, I wish to vouch for them too. I too was there, meditating with my brothers. Neither left my side. Dark narrows his eyes. Chin Lu, of all my people, pupil, I trust you to be honest with your master. And what of you, Takeo? Dark looks up at Takeo, pointing Soulbreaker in its sheath at him. Takeo immediately falls onto his knees and bows. I was there as well. All four of us were together. Is this true, Chin Lu? Yes, Master. As much as Brother Takeo and I may clash, I cannot tell a lie. He was there as well. All of us were. Minus Shoshang Wu San, who retired early. Master Dark huffs, <sighs> putting, his, putting the sword in his belt. Then that settles it. Master, please, give me an opportunity to prove Wu San's innocence. Dark uh, considers this. Interesting. You cherish their lives even though they would not spare yours. There's no room for your Western morality here. If you fail, you will share her fate. Will you still persist? I will do whatever punishment my master sees fit. However, <laughs> final... It may be. <laughs> Dark chuckles darkly. You have until sundown. Not a moment more. Dark goes back inside. 
Chin, Dakao, and Hua stand. Hua offers his hand to Bruce. Bruce takes it, letting Hua help him to his feet. That was noble of you. As for you taking the risk to vouch for me, thank you. Both of you. I merely told the truth. Nothing less. <laughs> You're all fools. What will you accomplish by dying with that harlot? Enough, Takeo. We should all retire for the night. We do not know what our master will require of us in the morning. Takeo scoffs and goes inside. That goes doubly for you, Guilo. Chen goes. I wish you luck, brother. Hua goes. Bruce is left standing alone. Only once am I alone. Does it really truly sink in? Am I playing an extremely dangerous game? Either I approve Sandra's innocence or we both die horribly. Failure is not an option, but the first hurdle may be the most difficult to overcome. Interior, Temple of Kal, holding cells. Sandra is bound up and shackled into iron manacles chained to the wall, then locked into the cell. Sandra is the only one who, with motive and opportunity. Sandra curls up against the wall, shivering in the cold. I have to believe in you, Easterner. Both our lives depend on it. Interior, Temple of Cal, Labyrinth of Wuchang. Morning. Bruce stands outside the labyrinth, investigating, scribbling with a pencil into a palm-sized notebook. Soulbreaker is no longer hanging from the ceiling. However, the rope from which it hung is still there. First things first. Examine the crime scene. Bruce uses binoculars to get a better look. Limited signs of fraying, and the strands are sliced at an angle. The rope couldn't have snapped. It had to have been cut. Bruce tucks the binoculars away and scribbles in his notebook. Then he examines the walls, walking around the labyrinth. On the other side, he finds a dagger on the floor. He picks it up. This is one of my daggers. I know I didn't bring them here. Someone must have stolen them from my bunk. Bruce touches the wall, feeling around. He sees a weird blemish higher up on the wall. He uses his binoculars to get a closer look. There's a scuff on the wall. A scuff on the wall. Potentially from an impact. Bruce puts the binoculars away and checks his dagger. Sure enough, he finds dust the color of the wall's stone on the blade. Residue from the stone wall. Someone must be... Th Someone must have thrown the dagger from quite a distance. This could have been what was used to cut the rope. Bruce tucks the dagger away and scribbles in the notebook. Interior, Temple of Cal. Holding cells. Bruce shows Sandra the dagger. And your point is? It's my first piece of evidence that somebody may have framed you. If someone went to the trouble to use my dagger, then clearly planned to cover their tracks by framing someone else. Still, I think I will keep this one to myself for now. At least Master Dark accused me of being an accomplice again. In other words, this changes nothing. It shows me you're innocent. Was that in doubt? That isn't what I meant. Sandra turns her back to him. I know what you meant. Sandra, please, I... Don't worry. Sandra, please, I didn't worry because I distrust you. <laughs> but because I wouldn't blame you if you had done it. You of all people have every reason to want that sword. Well, it wasn't me. Sandra sighs and turns back to Bruce. Still, I cannot blame you for considering the possibility when your life is on the line. Then, what's next? We make profiles of our fellow students and figure out who had means, motive, and opportunity. We are all students of a legendary monastery. We all had means. It is motive and opportunity they lack. That's what it looks like. But things aren't always what they appear. So do we know about them? Very well. 
I shall state their names in the order your culture prefers to prevent confusion. Given name first, family name last. Bruce takes out his notebook, ready to write. Exterior, Temple of Cal. Courtyard, Day. Chin, Takeo, and Hua all train in the courtyard. First, we see Chin training against a rotating wooden man post using scrimmage sticks. Student 1, Chin Lu. Han Chinese ancestry. Weapon of choice, Eskrima sticks. He is Master Dark's favored pupil, a loyal and strict traditionalist. During our training, he made frequent trips away from the monastery and for unknown reasons was allowed to do so. Suspiciously, he returned late the night before the theft with a strange, with a stranger in tow. If Chi Lu, if Chi Li, oh my, ooh. If, thank you. If Chin Lu was working with the accomplices, that may give him opportunity. Depends on who this stranger is. Next, we see Takeo slicing apart stuffed training dummies with Tana. Student 2, Takeo Yamashiro, Japanese ancestry, weapon of choice, blades. He has a superiority complex and looks down his nose at everyone except Chin Lu, whom he recognizes is esteemed by our master. I've seen him use many blades, but he seems to favor katanas and uh, tachi. That might be an obvious motive. Too simple on its own. Mm. Finally, we see Hua using his bow staff against hard hanging bags of grain, which swing in response, requiring him to dodge them. Student 3, Hua Rang, Korean Ancestry, weapon of choice, a bow staff, gentle, contemplative, a friend to all. Notably, he smells like flowers. He was the first to speak at our defense. If he was the thief, why would he help me and give me a chance to prove his guilt? He would have been better off saying nothing and let Master Dard kill us both. Who can say what his strategy may have been? Hmm. Then we have student four, Bruce Wayne. What? <laughs> European ancestry, primarily Celtic and Germanic, weapon of choice, money. A foolhardy idealist. Despite being a Kwai Lo, his dagger was found at the scene of the crime, though he claims it must have been stolen. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. I'm hardly joking. We must consider all options. Even ones we do not care for. Which brings me to... Cassandra. Student 5, Chuo Chang Wu San, also known as Sandra. Primarily Han Chinese, but some Manchu ancestry. Weapon of choice... Her biting wit. <laughs> she was the only one not to join the others in meditation until bedtime. That, and her history gives her motive, means, and opportunity. Yes, but I know she's innocent. How so? Because I believe her. Sandra looks at Bruce, letting herself enjoy a moment of sentimentality and gratitude, before frowning. Too sentimental. Same as always. Have you learned nothing in the years since we arrived? I've learned plenty. But what can I say? I'm still an outsider of Out of His Depth. Then, at least, you have finally learned your lesson. You're going to die here, Westerner. Not if you have anything to say about it, Easterner. Just like I won't let you die here either. Thank you for helping me. Try not to get into any more mischief. I cannot save you from behind these bars. Now that, I somehow don't believe. Bruce grins and then hurries off. Sandra looks after him, then looks at the bars, touching one thoughtfully. Interior Temple of Cal, Barracks. Bruce goes through his bunk. He finds his other dog dagger. As expected, one of my daggers is missing. He pulls the dagger he found in the labyrinth room out and compares it to his remaining dagger. Someone left the other one intentionally so they could be tracked back to me. A failsafe in case they fail to frame Sandra. But why would they concern them? The sword in her bunk is plenty 
damning on its own. Unless... Interior, Temple of Ka. Dark's quarters. What? Bruce, Chin, and Dark are in Dark's quarters. Bruce and Chin sit on their knees and heels while Dark stands. I humbly request to see the sword. It's for the investigation. For what reason? It's the scabbard. Interior, Temple of Cal, Labyrinth of Wuchang, past. We see a shot of unsheathed soul breakers hanging above the labyrinth. When we last saw the sword hanging from above the labyrinth, it was bare. Exterior, Temple of Cal, courtyard, past. We see a shot of dark point of the sheathed soul breaker at Sandra. But when I found it in Sandra's bed, it was sheathed. Interior, Temple of Cal, Dark's Quarters. I see the sheath mounted on the wall behind you, as it usually is. Master, your quarters are well guarded. Why would a thief add to their already considerable risk of unnecessarily by coming here to steal the, the sheath? And why would a thief be so clever to stealthily also be so foolish to hide the sword in their own bed? Dark frowns uncomfortably, considering. Hmm. Master, with your permission, if you do not trust an impertinent Guayla with the blade, then I volunteer to hold the sword in his stead and merely show it to Brother Bruce. Very well. You may both rise. Chin and Bruce stand. Dark pulls the sword from the sword and sheath from the wall and hands it to Chin. Chin bows with it in his hands and presents it to Bruce, pulling the sword out of the sheath just enough for Bruce to take a look. Bruce takes a look. These characters carved into the blade. I assume that they're some sort of marker steel? Indeed. Like any artist, they sign their work. What does it say? I cannot say for certain. The characters are used in both Chinese Hanzi and Japanese Kanji, but the pronunciation would be entirely different. I confess as well, I mostly read simplified Chinese, and Kanji uses the more traditional characters. You would be better off asking Brother Takeo. Master, I have no doubt you can read the characters perfectly. But would you mind if I asked uh, Brother Takeo? There's something I need to verify, if you'll indulge me. Dark thinks for a moment, then nods, addressing one of his monk guards. Mm. Very well. Send for Takeo. Interior, Temple of Cal. Doc's quarters. A while later. Takeo now stands there with Bruce and Chin, looking at the sword. Takeo's arms are crossed and he radiates haughtiness. Jazzy, that's you. I know, I needed to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Buttons. Are you st are you stupid? It's a maker seal. Do not use such impertinent language in front of our master. Calm yourself, Chinlu. Takeo, you were asked to read the characters, not to comment not to comment on them. Of course, forgive me, master. Takeo takes a close look. As expected, it's the name of the swordsmith, Goro Masamune. Bruce and Chin both visibly stiffen. What did you say? Chin looks at the blade, checking for himself, then sheathes it and presents it to Dark. Master, is this true? What are with the frightened faces? Goro Masamune is the greatest swordsmith of all time, rivaled only by... Senjio Maramasa. Hmm. The Kao makes a surprise sound, dropping his crossed arms and turning to Bruce. I'm shocked you know anything of Japanese swordsmith, Gaijin. I'm sure my interest is nothing compared to your expertise, brother, Tieko. That's not my name. I know. <laughs> Takeo. <laughs> that is why you that is that is why my mistake is this line and I'm just gonna go off script and that's what we're all gonna have to deal with. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start calling you brother Bruce. And you said Bruce like that's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> just, it just, it, it, no, it's, we just add this Espanol to it and Takeo. So, 
Send I am Joe. going. Um, I am going to cut your throat. Okay. Guys, Joe. Take it from the tails and shut the Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sure my interest is nothing compared to your expertise, brother, Takeo. Takeo. There you go. There you go. Take. Takeo. Fucking guy, Jin! Brother okay, Takeo, okay, focus, calm focus people, down. Focus people. <laughs> Focus, people. Come on. This is why your mistake is so surprising. How dare you? What mistake? Soulbreaker wasn't made by Masumune. It was made by Masumara. Muramasa. Muramasa. <laughs> Muramasa. Oh my god. So fucking white. <laughs> okay, okay. Come on, people. This on, dial it down. Come on. Takeo. Keep going. Takeo's eyes widen in shock. Th that's impossible. Muromasa's blades are cursed. Masamune's are holy. Anyone would assume... Not anyone. Only someone who knew their legends well enough to make such a mix-up. Dark checks... <clears throat> Dark checks the blade in sheath. Strange. The blade does indeed say Masamune. But the scabbard still reads Muromasa. Hey, don't forget, I have an alibi and it's you, Bruce. If I'm a suspect, so are you. himself up to say to Keo. It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did we lose Bruce Wayne? Did we actually Carl? lose him? Oh no. He's Carl. He's in I killed him with my oh, words. Carl. Carl, that kills people. Discord's breaking through. <laughs> oh! Our entire Burst platform. Wayne, come back. Burst. Burst, <laughs> Wayne, come back. Batman. Burst Wayne bursts back. He into couldn't the solve the mystery. The miracle never happened. <laughs> but Moon, come back! <laughs> Batman, where are you? Uh oh. Uh, Batman. I hope nothing crazy is going on. Uh... <laughs> well, he's really he's getting... not muted. Yeah, I think he's just the way. Oh. Hey, can everyone oh. hear me? 